So today I'm going to talk about three stocks I sold. So I have not sold out of these positions completely, but I have trimmed these positions slightly. I've trimmed these positions because the stock market is going absolutely nuts at the moment. And I thought this would be a very good video to make. And I've seen a few of you guys comment in the comment section quite a bit like, oh, so-and-so, DraftKings, I'm up for, you know, over 100% on this position or hymns or whatever, whatever stock it is. There's a few stocks at the moment, you know, you, you might have a few stocks that are still trying to recover out of this big stock market crash that we've been on, but if you've been able to get maybe start a new position in some stocks or you've been averaging down quite well on some positions, you might be doing very well. Um, so it depends which situation you're in, you know, you might not have all these stocks doing this, but I'm sure you'll have a few that are in this situation. And I thought this would be a really good video to talk about that, what we're going through right now. And I thought I'd just mention as well as that, that you guys know that I've trimmed the three positions and also why I'm doing this. So one of the big quotes I've always gone by when I've been investing is to be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy, greedy when others are fearful. And you probably know this quote comes from Warren Buffett. And I really like looking at what everyone else is doing and I automatically do the opposite. So you would have seen in the last few months, we've had a stock market that's just been negative, 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 negative. What have most retail investors been doing? They've been selling. What have I been doing? I've been buying, I've been capitalizing on stocks at the, some, for a lot of companies at the lowest valuations they've ever been at. And I've been buying that stocks. Now for me, I'm starting to get the rewards because what's everyone doing now? Everyone's kind of stopped panicking, everyone's stopped selling. And now everyone that's been on the sidelines is rushing to get into these companies. And what you see when these share prices, you're seeing stocks going up in crazy amounts. Now we've said previously on this channel, I've said multiple times, when we bounce, we're gonna bounce hard. And what's happened? We've bounced hard. And now what you have is everyone chasing in, trying to buy these stocks. Now, I don't know where the stocks are gonna go in the future. I don't know if we're gonna go up. I don't know if we're gonna go down. But I always like just protecting myself. And what I noticed, especially from the last bull run that we had from you know that kind of May 2020 time to especially like Feb 2021 time, that period of nearly a year, is a lot of people just sat back and when people were starting to get greedy, they just sat on it and went, I'm just gonna leave it. And as well as that, they might have also got sucked into looking at their portfolios. I used to call this like green eyes, is where you start looking at your portfolio and you're just like, oh, look at how much that's going up. I don't wanna sell it, it's just gonna keep going up. And then eventually, boom, you have that kind of kick, you know, kick in the teeth and then that stock portfolio just absolutely tanks. And what you're left with, well, you had green eyes and you've not took anything off the table, and now you're looking at going, oh, but I used to be up, you know, 100% on that position, and now I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere in a year's time. And a few times people will go against that, and, and then they'll come back with a quote of, oh, you know, you're uh, watering the weeds and trimming the flowers. I don't agree with that. Now, I understand there's a, a situation where it'd be stupid to go, oh, I'm holding this for five years, but it's gone up 60% in three days, I'm just gonna completely sell out of it. That would be a little bit more into that kind of quote that said there. But for me, you've always got to protect yourself. You've always got to take some money off the table because if the worst thing happens, you can turn around and go, you know what? Yeah, it sucks that I was up 60% and now I'm at nowhere, but you know what? I did take 20% off the table. And if it does go up and it and it doesn't drop there, you go, well, I took 20% off the table, but I'm still sat up, up now with a position that's even higher. I'm okay. And I think that a lot of people don't really protect themselves. And remember, this game is about making money. And if, if there's ever any time to take some profit off the table, you know, there's nothing, any, anything wrong with, you know, maybe a little 5%, 10% trim. And while everyone's now starting to be greedy, I'm looking at this situation and going, you know what? I'm gonna take a little profit off that table, trim a couple of positions, and that's what I did in this bull run. And as long as this bull run kind of carries on, there won't be any times where I look at DraftKings and go, oh, it's up 200% in two months, I'm gonna sell it all, I'll never do that. But if I look at Draft, if, if you tell me that DraftKings is up another 100% in a month's time, I'll be trimming DraftKings. I think it would be stupid not to. And I think it, that's all, always something you wanna be aware of. So with that considered, I did kind of trim out a few positions here. Um, all of them were about 10% sales. I think I think it was 5%, 10%, and I did sell all of this position, which I'll talk about. So um, this one here was for 80% was a company, which you guys will all know, we talked about it a lot on the channel, is Inmode. I did sell, um, I think it was 5% of my Inmode position for 80% gain. So even though I talked about Inmode and that I'm really bullish on Inmode in the next few years, I always have to weigh up that it's getting towards 20 times earnings. It's the stock itself is up over 100% within a, a month's time. 
and it's I still think it has a really good future but I'm weighing up in mode going okay it's up over 100% I'm looking at it and it's nearly getting close to 20 times earnings nearly near the market average and one of the big things that I have within mode is that I always base my really bullish case on that in mode goes back to trading at a premium which I think it will do and that's why I'm still holding so many shares in it but I always have to weigh up what happens if the market turns around and goes actually we're not going to trade in mode at a premium and it's like okay that's a little bit of a issue now um, you know that limits the upside and I don't know what the market's going to do like this is the big game you know you it's very easy to look at the market in a year's time and go well it was obvious that was going to happen it's not it's only obvious now because you know the answers and I'm looking at in mode right now and I'm looking at in mode going is it going to stay at this sort of valuation or is it going back to trade at premium I think it should trade at premium because it's growing at you know 30% revenue rate amazing profit margins good balance sheet buying back shares I think that deserves to trade at premium to the market what the market wants to trade it at I don't know so that's why I'm just taking a little bit of profit off the table on that one and it's also been on a crazy run but I still think it's got a very good future the next one was uh, a company that's reporting uh, earnings very soon which is Celsius. So I did take a little bit of profit off Celsius. Um, I sold about 10% of my position in Celsius. The reason why is because it's going into earnings and you would have noticed with Palantir actually, uh, the reported earnings on Monday, is that the thing with Celsius is that when you're trading at a premium, when you price to perfection, like Palantir, if the numbers aren't fantastic, this drops. And it could be the same as Celsius, you know, it's at a premium. The, you know, everyone's going into this quite I think it's like 120% revenue growth if they don't hit 120% revenue growth then you're going to have a little bit of an issue there and that's one of the big issues you know it's that it's that kind of price to perfection and it's trading at quite a high high rich valuation and um, also it's on the boom of the Pepsi deal and I think you know it, when you have that kind of boom off a deal and um, whether or not that holds up for a long time we'll see what happens so I, even though I'm like I said, I'm a massive fan of, of the company in the long term I just think when I look at the run it's been on you know it's up over 100% as well and um, it's you know trading a bit of a premium on the ha on the new highs of the Pepsi deal the euphoria of that how long does that last for same again just takes a profit off the table and I've just realized that I'm filming this video right now and I'm filming it a day earlier so by the time you guys actually see this you'll see Celsius earnings so we'll see what happens there um, but uh, the last one that I saw sold and I sold this completely was a very new company. So it was Melly or Mikado Libra. So I held this company for about seven days. And um, originally what happened is I took the, ca the cash from this one and this one and I put it into Mikado Libra. And uh, I thought, okay, I really like this at $800. I'm gonna buy it, the reported earnings. Earnings were fantastic. The stock went up crazy amounts. And then I was le left with a very small position in Mikado Libra. I looked at that position in Mikado Libra and I was like, to be honest with you, I'm quite happy to buy that in the $800 range. I'm not as happy to buy it in the $1,000 range. And it, there's no point in me having a really small position in this and keeping it forever because it's not worth the upkeep. And I'm not going to buy it at 1000 So what I might as well do is just sell out of this position, use that cash elsewhere. And if Mercado Libra does touch the $800 range, then I can build up a big position. If it doesn't, fair enough, we move on. But yeah, a little bit disappointing because I think it's got a fantastic future. I think that even now Mikado Libra has plenty of upside. Just for me, my risk to reward is Mikado Libra $800, which was a little bit disappointing. So, you know, once again, with a surge of earnings, that hype up, you know, we never know. Everyone's kind of got greedy now. Everyone think, everyone's automatically thinking, that's it, we're done. The market's going to go on a crazy run. What was if the market turns around in the next kind of, you know, let's say the inflation date is bad. Let's say that, you know, in... Uh, couple days time everyone thinks okay everyone's going to take the profit the table the market drops five percent i'll get that opportunity again and it's just weighing up the risk to reward and i thought that was a, the right decision there to do with that one so yeah those are the three stocks that i did sell anyway guys are trimmed anyway so i hope you enjoyed the video uh, just let you know there won't be a video tomorrow i'm currently away at the moment uh, but i will have a video again for you guys on friday when i should be back anyway hope you enjoyed it anyway if you do want to win and buy and sell companies in real time and a few more videos like this there's two exclusive videos on the patreon as well as what I'm buying and selling in real time on there. So uh, join that for the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I'll see you in a bit.